Today, 80% of people struggle with loneliness, but we are more than connected than ever. So what's causing this disconnection? Let's see in details how to beat the loneliness epidemic and what is happening. Plus, I will give you some practical tips on how to feel less alone only in a few minutes. So we all felt lonely time to time, like you have no one to talk to or to rely on. And many of us live far away sometimes from the family, or the people you grew up with or your childhood friends and it's getting harder and harder. Plus, when we get older, it becomes even more difficult to make new friends and make new connections as well. We all have busy schedules, we lack of organic meeting place in adulthood, meaning that we have to make a concerted effort to make new friends. For example, it's not like we used to be in school or in high school, you know, when we could easily forge relationships due to proximity and common interest. As the world has become more connected via the internet, social media, we have more opportunities than ever to connect with people. There are hundreds of apps for this very purpose, but having someone watch your stories or like your reels on Instagram, it's not the same as having a support system that you can really rely on. However, if this is the case, why rates of loneliness among young people are getting higher every year? And surely all this contact neckness means it's impossible not to have friends? We're gonna sort it at that. So the effect of social media can be caused to focus on superficial relationships over deep connections. People are only post usually when they're on the peak, when they are succeeding, when they're having a happy moment in their life, hashtag life goals, hashtag grateful, and can cause us to fear being vulnerable with others. Even if it's impossible to forge some deep connection with people, unless you let them see who you really are. And another problem as well, we seeing this highlights reel that gives a sense of FOMO, the fear of missing out, that we wouldn't have had without to social media. I know some girlfriends who broke up with someone and then they get obsessed and they cannot stop looking at those guys on social media and make them feel even worse. Oh, he met a new girl. Oh, he's on a honeymoon this weekend. And it's just like, stop. Connection and not friends. Likes don't support you when you really need. These connections are meaningless without real world substance to back them up. And this is a bit sad because the younger generations are learning to interact through a screen rather than a real face-to-face -face conversation. And it can severely affect their social skills, confidence in forging connection out in the wild. In social comparison, making us feel like we are not only lonely, but also we're not achieving anything especially if you compare yourself on social media. And this enhances of feelings of being left out, which in turn make us feel even more lonely and it's just horrible. So people, they are being alone, they are being lonely, isolation by itself is not enough to make you feel lonely. And we went through COVID and that didn't help and we all went through the worst actually. But we need to be provided with what you need in terms of emotional connections. For instance, many people choose to live alone and they're totally fine. Whether you could be as well surrounded by people in an event and you feel like I'm out of my place, I'm not feel comfortable, I'm alone. Feeling the inability to connect with others what makes us feel truly lonely. So the studies have suggested that the loneliness epidemic experienced by young people is directly linked to burnout culture. So the data suggests feeling lonely and unsupported at work or at home creates the unmanageable stress that leads to burnout. So this in turn makes people less open to seeking out for help or they're looking for more connection on social media and it's just like a cycle of behavior. The studies as well suggest that being around 
Lonely people actually makes you lonelier and more likely to self-isolate. So luckily they said misery loves a company. And I always said be very, very be careful and selective of your entourage in terms of your health, your weight loss, your fitness, and even for loneliness. But what if our loneliness is self-inflicted? Post-pandemic people seem to have become less outgoing and less willing to socialize and has led to increased level of social anxiety. So those suffering with social anxiety tend to isolate themselves in order to calm their nervous systems and regulate themselves, which further entrenches them in a loneliness cycle. So what can it be done to reverse this trend of loneliness? According to the mental health charity Mind, there are several ways to combat feeling of loneliness. First of all, don't be hard on yourself. Feeling lonely is already tough enough, so you don't need to make yourself feel worse because of it, okay? Making friends can be a very slow process. Just so embrace it, it's just not a marathon. Take your time. Find ways to make mutual connection organically, such as joining a club, a hobby, a sport club, a voluntary group that can be surrounded by people who have the similar interest, you will connect straight away. For me, it's scuba diving. Because it's much easier to make friends for proximity and mutual interest rather than trying to force connections, right? And just understand when you will do that, you will understand that your tribe will find you and not all your connections are meant to be. So just because it seems like someone is on a good match, it doesn't mean anything negative about you or about them. You will find the people who will fit you. I promise that. So keep looking. And finally, the biggest barrier to connection seems to be for poor mental health. So if you are struggling to just get through the day, it's unlikely you will have enough bandwidth, enough energy to try to make friends on top of that. So take stock of your life and accesses and you're taking care of yourself first. This including eating right, exercising, getting enough sleep, this is very important, and in a working environment that makes you feel valued. It's okay to feel lonely sometimes, just realize that there are far more people that they were feeling exactly the same as you. So don't be afraid, put yourself out there, and first, make the first move. There are peculiar things about communication, we often wait for others to reach us out, and to initiate that catch-up on the first coffee session, for example, and start a conversation. It's almost like feeling like an invisible game or wait and see. Don't do that. Think about it. If everyone is waiting and wait and see, no one will talk to each other. So be bold, make the first move, and don't get stuck in a world of silence, okay? Actually, it's not just okay, it's actually necessary. Approach people. Stop isolating yourself. Let me explain. So believe me, I've been there. A few months back, I found myself caught in this vicious cycle of self-isolation. Every time friends ask me to hang out, I will come up with an excuse. Usually my excuse are, I'm sick, I'm tired, I have work to do, I have a ton of work to do, or I'm not feeling well. And I convinced myself on that alone time that that's what I needed. But soon the me time that you created for yourself turned into a norm and rather than an exception. And I found myself stuck in a bubble of loneliness and that I unintentionally actually created. And I couldn't believe that. So this is the irony, right? So I was avoiding people to escape feelings or to feel overwhelmed, but I was actually setting myself far more profound sense of loneliness, so please don't do that. Have you found yourself sometimes glued to your phone without realizing you've been spending an hour on Instagram looking at stories of other people and I found something myself and you don't realize and boom, an hour is already away. Last time I found myself watching a story, I do, I watch a lot of things about fashion, but a lot as well about scuba diving because this is what I do and I love. And I was looking at an instructor who was jumping out of a boat explaining how 
to jump out of a boat for going scuba diving. The irony of it, I've been scuba diving since I'm almost a teenager. I'm myself an instructor. Do you think I know how to jump out of a boat to get in the water? You bet. Why? I was watching that. Because every time you spare your minutes or your precious time into scrolling at through, liking posts and commenting on photos and immersing yourself in kind of a perfect lies of others that you don't even know. You feel like you're connected to the world, but actually you don't. Myself, I took a social media break, even despite my work, and it was in December, just before Christmas. And the silence hit me really hard sometimes. But I found myself actually not to have to post everything something new on Instagram. And if you don't follow me, you can find me on MS Friday everywhere on my social media. But also I was enjoying my own company, just having lunch and talking to the girl next table. And I was fine, making new friends, going to an event almost every night with maybe 20% of only the people I knew. Find myself telling stories, laughing, listening to other people. And I felt like I neglected those real life connection when I was always on social media. So surely your phone or mine can be full of contacts, but your life is a little bit empty, right? So to me, it was a big wake up call and uh, living for screen is not a real life. Life, okay, so let's not forget to connect to the real world. And if you are sc scrolling on social media, try to give you a timing or put an alarm on your phone, 15 minutes, because it's like, I think you say in English, like the rabbit hole, you get caught in it. You're like, oh yes, I want to know more about that. And then you realize you just spent an hour and you think like, what a waste of my time. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Do not neglect your interests. Remember that maybe the painting class that you took a long time ago and you really were interesting to join, or maybe hiking sounds exciting to you. Often we get caught in our daily routines and we forgot to pursue what we really like, okay? And this might be not a big deal, but actually it is. Because engaging in activities that you really enjoy not only can uplift your mood, but also help you to connect with like men did people and when you stop doing something you really love, you're cutting off those opportunities to connect. So it's time to reconsider. Rediscover your passion. Reignite those connections. Trust me, it can make a true difference. And for me, it's much better to jump out of a boat for real than looking at from your phone. Valuing your relationship as well. We often underestimate the power of friendship, especially women. Did you know that strong social media connection can increase our chances of longevity, are you ready, of 50%? 50% is massive, so deep, meaningful relationships contribute to our mental health, to our physical well-being in more than a different way than we actually know. However, if you find yourself taking your relationship for granted, if you're not investing time and effort into them, you might be setting up yourself for loneliness. Friendship are like plants. They need nurturing to grow. Cherish your relationship. Celebrate your friend's birthday. Cherish just like, hey, what are you doing tonight? You just want to grab a drink and have a chit chat? Absolutely. I'm not feeling well. Are you up for a coffee? It's simple as that. Don't be shy. The people around you, you might care deeply for you, but if you don't express what you're going through, they're not going to read in your mind, especially they don't even see you face to face. And they won't be able to provide the help or the support that you really need. So please, girl, give a text, give a call to your girlfriends. The self-love at the core is the relationship that you have with yourself. Set the tones that you're going to have with others in your life. So love and accepting yourself with all your strengths and weaknesses is the first step forward combating loneliness. Stop comparing yourself to others. Like I said, especially on social media, you're creating a barrier that hinders connection. Be gentle with yourself because at the end of the day, you can pour from an empty cup, okay? 
say, feel you first. Please pay attention to your own behaviors. For example, notice when you're isolating yourself or you're neglecting your interests. Pay attention to your online habits and how you maintain relationships. Ask yourself, am I expressing my feelings? Am I practicing self-love? It's a journey, okay, not a race. And change cannot come overnight. But if you do a little bit, a little bit every day, that's the best exercise and it's going to open up a new world for you. We are human. We need connection. It's in our DNA. So while it's perfectly to enjoy a quiet night on your own, watching Netflix, ordering food, no problem. Don't make it as a habit. So take small step toward nurturing your connection, both with others and with yourself. And you might just discover that you're not alone as you think. There are a beautiful world of connection waiting for you at there. Go for it. Embrace it. Loving yourself is about committing to who you are. Understanding the many different nuances to your identity, showing yourself to a level of self-care and intimacy can usually reserve for others and people. I hope you really like this video and if I put a smile on your face or not, give me a big like. Smash the subscribe button. Don't forget the little bell. Don't forget to leave me a comment and and also, thank you so much. Please take care of yourself. And if you haven't watched this video, highly recommended. Enjoy it. Until the next video, I give you a big kiss. Bye.